Good evening, I'm your host, Abdurrahim Kashour, and this is L24 Midnight News Program, streaming live from the capital Algiers. Our top stories tonight are as follows. Why the storming of a Shifa hospital yesterday reveals an intelligence failure for the Zionist forces. The occupation army yet again invaded the Shifa medical complex for the second day in a row and attacked the injured and displaced Gazans inside. As Hamas resistance denies reaching any ceasefire and prisoner exchange agreements, the genocide in Gaza Strip enters its 41st day with new raids on various areas inside the enclave. While supervising the conclusion of the activities of the World Entrepreneurship Week, Algerian President confirms that Algiers has reached the point of no return in defending its sovereignty and renewed the state's commitment to recovering the stolen funds. Hello again and welcome first in our top stories. The Shifa Medical Complex in Gaza faces a renewed attack from Zionist occupation forces for the second day in a row. Reports confirm attacks on both patients and displaced individuals within the complex, intensifying the humanitarian crisis in the region. For the second consecutive day, Zionist occupation forces forcefully entered Gaza's Al Shifa Medical Complex violating international humanitarian laws. The occupation not only inflicted damage, but also desecrated the hospital, subjecting occupants to inhumane investigations. The southern entrance witnessed brutal actions, with the occupation jeopardizing the hospital's sanctity and the handling of deceased bodies, as confirmed by the Gaza Ministry of Health. Hamas, in turn, denied operating from medical facilities while occupation forces persisted in their actions at Al Shifa Hospital. All those weapons were not in Shifa. There is no, no center or control room for Hamas in this hospital. We avoid all the hospitals all the time. The Israelis, they have said that about Rantisi Hospital and they were lying. They've said that about Al-Quds Hospital, and everyone realized that they were lying, and now everyone is watching their lies, even with the support of the United States administration, which is a very silly and stupid support, because you can't just believe Netanyahu, who is a liar, and everyone knows that. Occupation soldiers intensified violations, exacerbating the suffering of doctors, patients, and displaced individuals with the critical shortages of oxygen, food, and water due to damaged infrastructure. Those inside the complex faced dire circumstances. The occupation further isolated the hospital by disrupting communication and threatening anyone attempting to leave. Sources within the complex reported the withdrawal of tanks, replaced by military bulldozers, conducting extensive destruction. External clashes persisted, creating a war zone, as confirmed by eyewitnesses. Amid this crisis, the World Health Organization explored evacuation options for Al Shifa Hospital. Limited fuel for ambulances hindered the Palestinian Red Crescent's ability to undertake this task. The situation remains critical as the occupation forces escalate aggression against Gaza's medical infrastructure. In the same line of thought, Zionist forces stormed the Shifa hospital for the second day in row in a long asserting that it held Hamas command center and military base. Yet, nothing they have claimed was found in a shameful admission by the Zionist media itself. Let's follow this report. The Zionist war machine raided Gaza's Al Shifa hospital for a second day in a row after besieging it for six consecutive days, claiming that Hamas was using the hospital as a command center and a military post 
saying the raid has helped it find evidence to back up its assertion. But more than 24 hours after the raid, the army failed to show any evidence of its claims in a crystal clear intelligence failure to justify random attacks. Neither Hamas-run tunnels nor military command center under the hospital were found. Even Zionist media confessed the failure, arousing unprecedented local and international condemnations. After 20 hours of their entry to Al Shifa Hospital, they exit with this week's story. It is obvious that they got with them a group of weapons and consider it to be evidence that justify their claims. But truly, it was inconsistent. And evidence that all the occupation stories are based on lies and no one truly believes it. The stage theater to cover up lies and distorted information didn't succeed in deceiving anyone. On the contrary, it only ridiculed the image of the occupation. The Zionist regime has not only failed in proving its lies in Shaden, but hasn't achieved any of its objectives, including eliminating Hamas, freeing its hostages, and displacing the Palestinians to neighboring countries. Since the beginning of the war, the occupation is stuck in its own random and discriminate plans to achieve its aims, at the expense of tens of thousands of innocent people's lives. But the occupation has suffered setbacks on the military, economic, political, social and internal fronts over the past few weeks, demonstrating the breakdown of its narrative. The Palestinian Islamic resistance movement Hamas reported that negotiations for a ceasefire and the release of captives from the occupation were ongoing in the first days of the Zionist aggression on Gaza. However, as of now, no agreement has been reached. Is that a rush, a member of Hamas political office and media officer, emphasized the lack of consensus, stating that Netanyahu showed no interest in the ceasefire or the release of hostages prolonging the war. The negotiations to reach a ceasefire and reach the release of captives from the occupation was ongoing since the first days with the Qatari mediation and sometimes in Egyptian participation. And until now, we did not reach any agreement regarding the ceasefire, even the humanitarian one, because in all clarity, Netanyahu doesn't want to reach an agreement, and he doesn't want a humanitarian ceasefire. And he's truly not interested in the release of hostages, be it the captives or his soldiers. And he wants to prolong this war. This could be his personal interest to prolong this war. Al-Qassam brigades announced the targeting of five vehicles of the Zionist occupation forces attempting to infiltrate the west of Beit Lahia with al Yashin O5 shells from zero distance. Destroying two of them, the resistance also eliminated a Zionist force holed up in a building in Beit Hanun using an anti-fortified Yashin missile resulting in the complete destruction of a building and casualties. On the other side, Al-Quds Brigades published an intense scenes of uh, filing attacks on Zionist occupation soldiers and vehicles penetrating the front lines of Gaza Strip by the Telegram application. <laughs> Palestinian ambassador to the UN Riyad Mansour said that a Security Council should have called for a ceasefire a long time ago 
as he puts it. The Security Council should have called for a ceasefire a long time ago. It should have called for a ceasefire now. It should have heed, heeded the call by the UN and every humanitarian organization on earth calling for a humanitarian ceasefire, including the Secretary General of the United Nations. It should have been convinced that there is no military solution, especially one that relies on the commission of atrocities, and it should have advanced political ones. United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights Volker Turk on Thursday called for an international investigation into war violations committed by occupation forces in Gaza. Turk added the extremely serious allegations of multiple and profound breaches of international humanitarian law. The total depletion of fuel supplies is imminent, according to UNRWA, and it would be catastrophic across all of Gaza, leading to the complete collapse of water, sewage, and crucial healthcare services, and ending the trickle of humanitarian assistance that has been permitted to date. Massive outbreaks of infectious disease and hunger seem inevitable. In, some, in the same line of thought, United Nations Human Rights Chief warned of widespread outbreaks of disease and hunger, which seemed, as he said, inevitable in Gaza after weeks of occupation assault on the densely populated Palestinian enclave. International humanitarian law again provides special protections to hospitals, so you need to go the extra, extra mile to make sure that patients, medical personnel are protected. Um, in the current, we have seen in this particular case contradictory uh, and contradictory uh, statements. This actually is the type of thing where you would actually want an independent international investigation to find out what is actually happening. At uh, dawn on Thursday morning, the Zionist occupation forces arrested 69 Palestinians from various governorates of the West Bank. The arrests included citizens from Ramallah, Al Khalil, Jenin, in addition to uh, Kalkilia, Beit Lahm, Nablus, Al Ariha, and uh, Tubas. In a parallel with the war of extermination, it is waging against the people in Gaza. The Zionist occupation is intensifying its aggression against large areas and parts of the West Bank, including arrests and attacks against citizens, in addition to storming Palestinian cities and towns and demolition countless homes. U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday said that he had made it clear to the so-called Prime Minister of the Occupation in Palestine that occupying Gaza would be a big mistake. Joe Biden added that the two-state solution was the only answer to resolve this conflict. I made it clear to the, I made it clear to the Israelis I think it's a big mistake to, for them to think they're going to occupy. Gaza and maintain Gaza. I don't think that works. The Algerian President Mr. Abdel Majid Tabouna stated that no external power in the world can put pressure on Algeria and that the nation has, it his, in his words, reached the point of no return in its focused defense of its sovereignty. The Algerian President made it a plan that the government is on the lookout for any deviations from standards that have harmed the country's economy in the past and cost the public funds billions of dollars during his supervision of the entrepreneurship days, conclusion activities in the capital city of Algiers. In this regard, he reassured businesses owners that uh, the nation has moved into a phase where past practices will be de 
continued permanently and emphasized the need for collaboration with friendly countries in efforts to develop a robust economy and strategy that generates econ income and satisfies residents' demands in a few friendly nations to progressively offset imports. Also, Algerian President Saad Majid Tabun reaffirmed the state's commitment to recovering stolen funds, transferred property, as well as real estate acquired illegally abroad, noting the response of the European Union, which gave national approval in this context. President Tabun highlighted that this process requires efforts and may take a very long time. However, the state remains keen to permanently monitor public bank funds. In the same context, the Algerian president highlighted that the young Algerian community established abroad has the same value as young Algerians within the country. Je souhaiterais bêche Massimo là, le, le chef du gouvernement, qu'on fasse au moins une fois par an des assises de l'immigration algérienne dans, dans tous les secteurs. Ça, ça va de la médecine jusqu'à la petite entreprise, jusqu'à en passant par beaucoup de choses. Donc, vous êtes partie prenante de ce qui se passe dans le pays. Ça, c'est clair. Donc, la séparation même, si ce n'est la séparation géographique qui, qui s'impose d'elle-même. Mais moi, je ne différencie pas d'une chabab tanana ou chabab Vous êtes une force créatrice du pays. Major General Saeed Changri, head chief of staff of the Algerian Army, visited the Katik and Elenik, specializing in aircraft, aviation equipment, and electronic and cyber defense technologies. The visit aimed to review areas of cooperation and discuss potential developments. As part of his working visit to United Kingdom, Algerian Foreign Minister Mr. Ahmed Attaf had bilateral talks with the British Transport Minister Mark Harper, according to a statement by the Algerian Foreign Ministry. The same source mentioned that the talks focused on ways and prospects for developing and enhancing uh, the, the relation between the two countries, in addition to bilateral cooperation in other fields such as artificial intelligence and the construction of railway lines. In order to encourage and draw in foreign investment, Algeria's Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf delivered a presentation on the components of investment in Algeria as well as a key pillars of economic policy. This came during his discussion with the group of British businessmen and clients who are members of the Algerian British Business Council at the Algerian Embassy's office in London. According to an announcement from the Algerian Foreign Ministry, Lord Richard Risby, the Special Envoy of the British Prime Minister tasked with blustering the country's commercial ties with Algeria, was present at the meeting and received a briefing from Minister Attaf. He gave them an update on the promising signs the Algerian economy was showing. Along with encouraging investment, the Algerian Foreign Minister also urged British business partners to take advantage of Algeria's potential and commercial prospects, particularly in light of the country's recent economic changes. Let me invite you to further explore the huge business potential in Algeria and to be the driving force of this promising economic partnership between our two friendly nations. I invite you to renew your confidence and your trust in a country that is finally unleashing its full potential in order to be a credible and reliable player in the world economy. Investing in Algeria means betting safely on a land full of possibilities and promises. Mr. Ahmed Attaf also highlighted the reports from international financial and economic organizations that loaded the, the adaptability of uh, Algerian economy in the face of external shocks during his meeting with the British businesses. These figures attest to the country's 
sound economic and financial health. They have been acknowledged and reported by the international financial institutions, in particular the World Bank, who has particularly praised the resilience of the Algerian economy against external shocks. To a large extent, this encouraging economic performance, performance is the result of the important reforms undertaken by the Algerian government to build up a friendly business climate in line with the expectations of our foreign partners. In this regard, the government embarked on an ambitious policy of stimulating private and foreign investment. In Spain, Pedro Sanchez has secured a new term as Spain's parliament backed his candidacy, candidacy with 179 votes in favor, 171 against, and in months of political deadlock in Spain. His Spanish Socialist Workers' Party breached separate deals with a number of regional parties, including a continuous bill on amnesty for Catalan separatists that has sparked protests across Madrid. Following a year out of the meeting in Indonesian city of Bali, Chinese and U.S. presidents met again, this time in the United States. After the talks, China has praised the warm meeting between Xi Jinping and Joe Biden in California in a marked shift of rhetoric after months of negotiations aimed to restabilize what has been a testy relations. In the delicate dance of diplomacy, a mere handshake can hold the weight of thawing icy relations. The two world leaders, Xi and Biden, facing a loomy conflict, decide it's time to sit down, brick bread, and salvage what's left on a fraying international rapport. Seated on a round table, the leaders aimed to inject a semblance of normality into the Sino-US relationship. However, despite the veneer of diplomacy, the palpable and the current of mistrust lingered. China is ready to be partner and friend of the United States. The fundamental principles that we follow in handling China-US relations are mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he... The pursuit of mutual respect took a detour on Biden and a diplomatic for power labeled Xi a dictator. The Chinese retort was swift, denouncing the remark as extremely wrong and an irresponsible political manipulation. This verbal sparing cast a murky shadow over any fledging progress in fostering dialogue between the two global powers. That wasn't particularly necessary. Here he is trying to create a better environment for US-China relations, and he proceeds to um, cast an insult at the president of China. Um, it doesn't create a good foundation of going forward. Um, I don't think it will undermine any of the accomplishments, but it wasn't necessary. A more sophisticated response would have been helpful. The Xi Biden rendezvous marked the first verbal exchange in a year, and the intervening months had done little to ease the strain on an already precarious diplomatic tightrope. <laughs> Ending up our news bulletin with sport on Thursday evening, the Algerian national team began its campaign in the African qualifiers for 2026 World Cup with a three-goal triumph over its Somali opponent. The Desert Warriors hat-trick in the game, hosted by Nelson Mandela Stadium in Algiers, was signed by Somali defender Ahmed Abdi by mistaking his own goal in the first minutes of the show. And a said striker, Baghdad Bounijah, managed to reinforce the score at the 30 minutes scoring the second one, concluding the green scoreboard by the veteran Islam Slimani, who scored the third goal at the 18th, while Ahmed Youssef scored Somalia's only goal. With this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we reach the end of our news bulletin. All I can say at the end, have a blessed Friday and good night.